Hello everyone, Alexander Flores here. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over AWS Cognitive functionality, such as checking if your user is logged in, as well as how to log your users out. In the last two tutorials, we went over how to create users and how to have your users log in. Links to those videos will be in the description. The first thing I'm going to do is going to make a new file called accounts.js. Inside this file, we're going to create our own context. That way we can import accounts anywhere we want throughout the rest of our components and gain access to the ability to check if the user is logged in as well as authenticate them. So some of the login functionality will end up in this file. And the reason for that and not for signup.js is because a lot of the times you need to authenticate the user in order to perform some type of action, not just simply logging in, such as how to change your email or change your password. The user has to provide their current password in order to do both of those things. And so adding an authentication method inside of a separate file that we import elsewhere would save us time. We're going to start off by importing React as well as create context. Then we're going to go ahead and actually create our context. We're then going to create an account functional component. We're then going to export both of these things from this file. From here, we're now going to create the account context provider. So we're going to replace this div and we'll come back to this part once we have the rest of our functions done. We're going to start off with an authenticate function and we essentially want to duplicate what we have in our login.js file. So we're going to go over here and we're going to take this code right here. I'm going to copy it into here. We now want to import some of the things we imported up here. So we can copy this import as well. We now need access to the email and password. So we're going to add those as parameters. We can actually call these username and password of capitals here. We can now do this and this just makes everything look a little bit cleaner. We now have to import our user pool. We can do that like we did in the previous videos. I'm going to name it as pool. That way we can make this look a little cleaner as well. I'm then going to put everything on one line just to save some space. We now want to wrap this entire thing inside of a promise. So we're going to make this an asynchronous function and we're going to cut everything inside of this. We are then going to return a new promise. Inside of this, we're going to resolve the data here as well as on the password required. However, we're going to reject if there's an error. We're now going to export the authenticate function through our context provider. So the body of this element here has to be the children, which we get from props. So props.children. And then inside of the provider, we're going to provide the value. And for now, we're just going to have authenticate. We can go ahead and save this. And we're now going to import this into our login component. So we can go ahead and get rid of some of this code here, such as everything in odd submit aside from event.prevent default. So now we're going to go ahead and use the context inside the login component so we can import the use context hook. And then we can also, and then we can also import the account context from the account file. Inside here, we can then use object destructuring to gain access to the authenticate method. Now, in order to use context inside of the login component, the parent component has to have access to the accounts component. So login is used inside of app, and then we need to simply import the account component just like this. And then we can replace this div with the account component here. Now, this isn't going to visually change anything because all the account component is doing is simply rendering the children. So it'll render things just as normal. However, this now gives access to all of the children components, such as sign up and login to be able to access the account context. So before we save this, we're actually going to go ahead and use the authenticate method. We're going to pass in the email and password. And then because this is a promise, we have access to dot then and dot catch. We're simply going to console log the information. And if there's an error, then we're going to console log as well. You can go ahead and save all these files. And on our website, we go ahead and log in with a test user that I created in the first video. We click on login and it says on success and login as well. So we see that this method is being ran and also this on success is being ran as well. Next, we're going to create a function called get session, and this is going to return the, the current information if the user is logged in or not. Now this function is simply going to return a promise. So we want to make this an asynchronous function. And then we're going to make it return a new promise with resolve and reject as parameters. We're then going to gain access to our user, similar to line 15 here. However, here we're assuming that the user might be logged in. And so the Cognito user pools have a function to return the current user. We can go ahead and access the current user with pool, which is what we're importing as user pool dot get current user. Now that we have access to the user, we first want to see if the user is valid. So if the user exists, 
We're then going to go do some stuff inside this if statement, but first we can simply add else and we can simply reject. Now inside here we want to say user.getSession. This is going to have one parameter that's going to be a callback and it's going to have an error object as the first argument and then the second argument will be the session. So the first thing we could do is we can say if there's an error, we're simply going to reject. Otherwise, we're going to resolve with the session information. We can now go ahead and use the get session method inside of our context provider so we can gain access to another files. And then we're going to go ahead and make a new file. We're going to call this status.js. And this can be a very simple file that just displays if we're logged in or not. So first, we're going to go ahead and import React. We're also going to import the use context hook. We're also going to import the account context. So here we're going to simply render a div. We also need to import the use state hook, and then we're going to use the use state hook to keep track of our status if we're logged in or not. So by default, we're assuming that we're not logged in, and then we're going to go ahead and have the use context be able to access the account context, and now we have access to the get session method. So we also want to use the use effect hook, which is similar to component div mount. So this function will be ran whenever the component mounts, and we're going to use this to get session. So here we're just going to simply say dot then, we're going to get the session, we're going to log it to the console so we can take a look at it, and then we're also going to set status to true. We don't actually need to handle the error here because by default we're not logged in. So then over here we're going to go ahead and render if we are or are not logged in. I'm going to do this simply by saying status question mark, so if the status is true, we are going to say you are logged in, otherwise we're going to say please log in below. We can go ahead and save this, and we're going to import this into our status.js file and we're gonna render it right above sign up. You can go ahead and save this, and on our website, we see you are logged in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our current cookies, and if we refresh, it'll say please log in below. If I type in our credentials, and we click on login, we see that this worked here. However, this doesn't update automatically. We're gonna refresh, and it says you are logged in. So now we're gonna add a simple logout button. So first thing we're gonna do is go into accounts, and we're gonna create a logout method. And so this is going to be very simple. We're first going to get the user. Then we're going to see if the user actually exists. And then we're going to say user.signout. So we can go ahead and access this in our provider by doing this right here. Go ahead and save this file. And then under status, I'm actually going to show a logout button if they are logged in. So we're going to gain access to the logout method using the context. And then we're just going to not do just this string. We're actually going to remove that. And we're going to have some actual JSX here. So here we're simply going to have a div that says you are logged in, and then we're going to have a logout button. On click, we'll call the logout method that we're getting access to from here. So let's go ahead and save this. So it says you are logged in. We click on logout, and if we refresh, we're going to say please log in below. So this is how you can check if a user is logged in. We can now gain access to this get session method, and we're going to be adding more to this function here where we can add in more additional information and be able to redirect people to the login form if we do want them to be logged in. All that will come in future videos, but this is how you go ahead and see if the user is logged in and also how to log them out. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We do have a link to our Warnoff Keys Discord server in the description as well, and the code to this will be in the GitHub repository also found in the description. Thanks for watching.